Hello, welcome again to our evidence class. Now we are through with rule 128 and rule 129. Now let us go to rule 130 regarding rules of admissibility. Now this rule is divided into three portions. We have the object evidence and then the documentary evidence and testimonial evidence. Now we will take this uh, portions, each portion one by one starting with the object or real evidence. Okay, so object or real evidence. Section 1, objects as evidence are those addressed to the senses of the court. When an object is relevant to the fact and issue, it may be exhibited to, examined or viewed by the court. So examples of object or real evidence are um, those illegal drugs seized during a bypass operation or murder weapons like a gun or a knife used to kill the victim and um, another example is from the case of OJ Simpson okay this is an American case United States of America wherein OJ Simpson was the accused and he was charged with murdering his wife and another person okay so what happened in this in that case was that a a glove okay a bloody glove was found in the crime scene so in that crime uh, according to the prosecution the glove was used by the um, the accused OJ Simpson however when the glove was tried or fitted into the hands of OJ Simpson the glove didn't fit okay? didn't fit the hands of OJ Simpson so um, accordingly the court acquitted the, the accused OJ Simpson in that case okay? so these are examples of evidence which are addressed to the sense particularly the sense of sight of the court okay but uh, however we must remember that um, this object evidence is not visual alone so it is not only addressed to the sight the sense of sight of the court okay it covers the entire range of human senses hearing taste smell and touch okay so it's not sight alone so for example in cases of infringement of a musical composition right so um, let's say a has a musical composition and he publishes it okay so a therefore gets a copyright over his musical composition now here comes B and B also makes a musical composition however the musical composition of B is somewhat similar to the musical composition of A so therefore A hearing the musical composition of B files a copyright infringement against B because as I've said, B has a similar musical composition as to that of A. Okay, so now, aside from the musical composition of A, they will also present as evidence the musical composition of B. Okay, and comparing the musical composition of A and B, the court can now determine whether there really whether or not there really was an infringement of the musical composition of A. Okay, so the musical composition of A and the musical composition of B are presented as evidence in court. Okay, so what sense does this 
musical composition addressed to this as evidence what sense does or do they address to di ba? the sense of hearing okay so that's an example of an object evidence addressed to the sense of hearing of the court Okay, now, so, since we are in the rules of admissibility, uh, let us tackle on the requisites for the admissibility of an object evidence. Okay, so, um, I think we already have a glimpse of knowledge on the um, two basic requisites or two requisites for the admissibility of an evidence, right? And rule 1 to 8 so we have um, the, the the evidence must be relevant second is that the evidence must be competent or um, not excluded by the constitution the law and the rules on evidence now this basic requisites you are seeing here right now is just a more detailed okay, enumeration of the admissibility the requirements for admissibility of an object evidence okay so let's see now first basic requisite here is that the evidence must be relevant okay so you already know that that the evidence must be relevant and then second is the evidence must be authenticated if you're wondering it's different from the unright the, the the, enum the enumeration enum uh, under rule 1 to 8, right? Because um, where is the competence? Okay? But uh, this second requisite here, the authenticated, is the process of determining whether the evidence or the object evidence is competent or not. Okay? So, this authentication in this authentication, we will determine whether the object evidence is excluded by the constitution, the law, or the rules on evidence. So, that is the connection. Okay? And then, the authentication must be made by a competent witness and the object must be formally offered. So, just remember this uh, for now, this fourth basic requisite okay so we will um we will go or we will be discussing this formal offer on our later discussions so now let us proceed to the other kind of evidence the documentary evidence so under section 2 documents as evidence consist of writings recordings photographs or any material containing letters words, sounds, numbers, figures, symbols, or their equivalent or other modes of written expression offered as proof of their contents. Photographs include still pictures, drawings, stored images, x-ray films, motion pictures, or videos. So, those are documentary evidence. So, let us give an example. For example, a dispute between ABC Corporation and XYZ Corporation. So, ABC Corporation is claiming that XYZ Corporation has not yet paid its obligation of 10,000 pesos. So, ABC Corporation filed a collection case against XYZ Corporation. Now, XYZ Corporation as a defense is uh, claims that it has already paid the 10,000 pesos. So what will be the defense or what will be the evidence of XYZ Corporation in order to prove that it has already paid the 10,000 pesos? So XYZ Corporation will present the official receipt saying that it has already paid 10,000 pesos to ABC Corporation. So, okay, for example, XYZ Corporation will present this official receipt. Okay, but okay, we must remember 
that the fact that is that uh, the evidence presented in court is a document does not necessarily mean that it is a documentary evidence it will now de depend on the purpose okay the purpose of the uh, documentary evidence okay under the principle of mutual multiple admissibility private documents may be offered and admitted in evidence both as documentary evidence and as object evidence depending on the purpose for which the document is offered if offered to prove its existence condition or for any purpose other than the contents of a document the same is considered as an object evidence when the private document is offered as proof of its contents the same is considered as a documentary evidence so it is the purpose okay in order for a document to be considered a documentary evidence it must be offered as proof of its contents okay we have to remember that the document must be offered as proof of its contents okay let's go back to the example uh, pre we have previously discussed so as you can see the contents of the official receipt is saying received from xyz corporation the sum of 10,000 pesos that is the content of the official receipt and what uh, what is the defense again of xyz corporation that it has already paid the 10,000 pesos to ABC Corporation. Okay, so this, so this um, official receipt offered as evidence, okay, is being offered as proof that XYZ Corporation has already paid the sum of 10,000 pesos. It is in the content. The document, the official receipt, is um, trying to prove what is in the content that XYZ Corporation has paid the sum of 10,000 pesos. Okay, so, the con yung content mismo ng document ang pinuprove ng document. Alright? Understood? Okay, so, um, let's have another example. Okay, in order for a better um, illustration or understanding. Say, for example, uh, a mark bill, okay, mark money during a buy uh, operation. So, <clears throat> diba, usually, the PDEA agents or the police will use mark money during um, a buy bust operation and then that mark money used during the buy bust operation will be used as evidence against the arrested drug pushers so do, would you agree with me that a money is a document right money is a document however when presented in court uh, against the arrested drug pushers ju uh, during the buy bust operation the, the money will not be offered as proof of the contents of the of its contents right the money is not offered to prove that it's 10,000 10, pesos or 1,000 peso bill it, it, that it is a 500 peso bill it will not be ano it will not be offered as proof of that but it will be offered as uh, for the purpose of its uh, to determine or to um, consider that it existed or it was um, 
used during the bypass corporation. Okay? So, the purpose of that mark money bill is to prove its existence and that it was used during the bypass operation not to prove uh, not to prove the contents of that marked money so in that case the marked money will not be considered as a documentary evidence but as a as an object evidence okay now for its requisites for the admissibility of documentary evidence it is the same as that of the object evidence so the evidence must be relevant the evidence must be authenticated the evidence the authentication must be made by a competent witness and the object must be formally offered okay so now in documentary evidence there are certain rules that we must be familiar with or we must remember so first we have the original document rule or previously known as the best evidence rule so that is under section 3 of rule 130 so under this section okay this so this is a general rule under the original document rule huh? when the subject of inquiry is the contents of a document writing recording photograph or other record no evidence is admissible other than the original document itself so section 3 is saying that that if a document is offered as a documentary evidence okay so we already know that on or on how to determine if a document is being offered as a documentary evidence so if a document is being offered as a documentary evidence then um, the the document must be the original one okay the document presented in court must be the original document not a photocopy of it okay? not if or a photograph of the document is not allowed okay it must be the original document so what's the purpose why should be why should it be the original document when presenting a documentary evidence okay so the basic the basic premise justifying the rule is the need to present to the court the exact words of a writing where a slight variation of words may mean a great difference in rights an ancillary justification for the rule is the prevention and detection of fraud. The rule is also justified by the need to avoid unintentional or intentional mis uh, mistaken transmissions of the contents of a document through the introduction of selected portions of a writing to which the adverse party has no full access. Okay, so the underlying purpose for the best evidence rule or the original document rule is the prevention of fraud or mistake in the proof of the contents of a writing. Okay, so however, the original document rule admits certain exceptions. And, the, and those exceptions are <clears throat> embodied still under section 3. So first, so meaning um, uh, under these exceptions provided under section 3, um, the document may, uh, a copy of the document may be um, admitted. Okay. So first exception is when the original is lost or destroyed or cannot be procured in court without bad faith on the part of the offeror. offeror. Okay? So, <clears throat> na-destroy or na-lost daw yung original ng document but you must remember that the destruction or the loss of the document must be without bad faith on the person presenting the copy of the original document. Second is 
when the original is in the custody or under the control of the party against whom the evidence is offered and the latter fails to produce it after reasonable notice or the original cannot be obtained by local judicial processes or procedures. Second exception. Third exception is when the original consists of numerous accounts or other documents which cannot be examined in court without great loss of time and the facts sought to be established from them is only the general resort, result of the whole. Okay, so if uh, medyo um, marami yung original document, okay, marami siya, voluminous, and it will take time to consider all that numerous accounts of the original document. And the only purpose, okay, or what we only want from those voluminous original documents is the general result. Okay, so in that case, uh, it is an exception to the original document rule. Fourth exception, when the original is a public record in the custody of a public officer or is recorded in a public office. Okay, so if it's a public document or public record and it is in a government, uh, it is kept in a government office. So in that case, um, the government office may just issue a certified true copy of that um, public document or public record. Letter E, last, is when the original is not closely related to a, co to a controlling issue. Okay, so those are our exceptions to the original document rule. But what is an original document? So it is defined under section 4 of rule 130. An original of a document is the document itself or any counterpart intended to have the same effect by a person executing or issuing it. Okay. An original of a photograph includes the negative or any print therefrom. If data is stored in a computer or similar device, any printout or other output readable by sight or other means show to reflect the data accurately is an original. So, we must remember this. We just, if, if we are not sure if a document is an original, we will just have, we, we have to refer under this section 4A of Rule 130. Okay, to determine if, it, if the document is original or not. Okay, so this, okay, we must remember that, ha? And then, however, under section 4 also, section 4B, a duplicate is or was also defined. Okay, let's see, what is a duplicate? A duplicate is a counterpart produced by the same impression as the original or from the same matrix or by means of photography including enlargement and miniatures or by mechanical or electronic ray recordings or by chemical reproduction or by equivalent techniques which accurately reproduce the original. So that is a duplicate. And under section, section 4C, it is stated here that a duplicate is admissible to the same extent as an original. Okay, so it, uh, a duplicate is not an original, but it has or it is admissible to the same extent. Okay, however, okay, it will not be admissible to the same extent as an original if a genuine question is raised as to the authenticity of the original or the circumstances or in the circumstances it is unjust or inequitable to admit the duplicate in lieu of the original.
Okay, so now let us proceed to the <clears throat> um, secondary evidence. Okay, so um, if you can remember, di ba, uh, one of the exceptions to the original document rule under section 3A is when the original is lost or destroyed or cannot be procured in court without bad faith on the part of the offeror. Okay? In that case, um, the, the original of the document may, uh, or a copy only of the original document, may be uh, presented. However, it's not automatic. Okay? It is not automatic that if the original is lost or destroyed, we can automatically present a copy thereof. Okay? It's, not, uh, it's not like that. Okay? There are certain requirements that we must um, accomplish or comply first. So, it is provided under Section 5 when the original document is unavailable. Under the secondary evidence uh, na ito ha, so, when the original documents has been lost or destroyed or cannot be procured in court, the offeror, upon proof of its execution or existence and the cause of its unavailability without bad faith on his or her part, may prove its contents by a copy or by a recital of its contents in some authentic document or by the testimony of witnesses in the order stated. Okay, so, i-dissect natin. Ano tong section 5? Okay, dissect natin. Ano ba ang requirements para maka-prove ta or maka-present tayo ng secondary evidence? So, by the way, ang secondary evidence is when that is that is that evidence, that documentary evidence when the original cannot be presented in court. So, mag, uh, ano tayo, mag, uh, ano tawag dyan? Gamitin natin ang secondary evidence. Okay. Dissect natin ang section 5. Ano ba ang requirements para makapresent tayo ng secondary evidence? First is that the original document was lost or destroyed or cannot be produced. Okay, so we must, of course, we must show that in court. And then, second is that there must be proof of its execution or existence. So, there must be that proof of existence of the original document. So, kailangan natin i-prove na mayroong original talaga ng document. And then, that the unavailability of the document is without bad faith on his part. So, dapat walang bad faith dun sa part ng offeror, yung nagpapresent ng secondary evidence. Dapat uh, walang bad faith sa kanya or hindi siya ang dahilan or hindi niya um, uh, inintend or wala siyang intention na sirain or destroy yung original document. Okay? Dapat walang bad faith sa kanya and okay, so that's those are the requirements and if the requirements are complied if these requirements are complied with then a copy or by a recital of its contents in some authentic document or by testimony of witnesses in the order stated may be presented as secondary evidence okay but remember ah in the order stated. So, hindi pwede na mag-present ka kaagad automatically ng testimony of witnesses okay, as a secondary evidence if merong copy ng original document. Okay? Hindi pwede. Dapat, walang ka, da, before ka makapresent ng testimony of witnesses as secondary evidence of the original, dapat wala rin ang copy and wala rin recital of its content in some authentic document. Okay? In the order, in this order stated, priority ang copy, and then second priority ang recital of contents, and 
Third priority ang testimony of witnesses. Okay? So that is section 5. Now let us proceed to section 6. Again, this is another this is um, another circumstance for instance of exception to the original document rule where a secondary evidence may be presented when the original document is in the adverse party's custody or control. Okay? So section 6 if the document is in the custody or under the control of adverse party he or she must have reasonable notice to produce it. If after such notice and after satisfactory proof of its existence, he or she fails to produce the document, the secondary evidence may be presented as in the case of its loss. Okay, so let's dissect it. Okay, ano bang requirements in order to present secondary evidence? Uh when the doc, the original is in the hands or in the possession of the adverse party against whom the documentary evidence will be presented. First is that the document, the original document is in the custody or control of the adverse party. Okay? And then the ris that, that reasonable notice to produce it was given to the adverse party. So, magbigay ka ng notice. Okay, pwede sulatan or mag-demand doon sa adverse party na i-produce yung original. And then, did the adverse party fail to produce the original document despite the notice? So, despite the notice, hindi pa rin nag-present or hindi pa rin nag-produce ang adverse party sa original document. And then, D, that there is proof of the existence of the original document. Okay, so if these requirements or requisites are complied with, then secondary evidence can be presented. Okay, but uh, it says here, huh, the secondary evidence may be presented as in the case of its loss. So it's the same under section 5. Okay, the, the secondary evidence may be a copy of the original by a recital of its contents in some authentic document or by the testimony of witnesses in the order stated. So, ganun pa rin sa section uh, pareha sa section 5. Okay? So, next is Okay. Section 7. Uh, summaries. So, this is Again, another instance of the exception to the original document rule. Okay, when the contents of documents, records, photographs, or numerous numerous accounts are voluminous and cannot be examined in court without great loss of time, and the facts sought to be established is only the general result result of the whole, the contents. Of such evidence may be presented in the form of a chart, summary, or calculation. Okay? So, the requirements here is that the document, the documentary evidence, are voluminous. And then, second is it cannot be examined in court without great loss of time. And third, is the fact sought to be established is only the general result. Okay, we must comply that requirements, that, that, that uh, requisites must um, concur. And if the requisites concur, then the secondary evidence may be presented. And the secondary evidence here are any of the following a chart, summary, or calculation. Okay, these are the secondary evidence here. Chart, summary, or calculation. Okay? The originals shall be available for examination or copying or both by the adverse party at a reasonable time and place and the court may order that they be produced in court. Okay? So, even if the originals will no longer be presented in court, 
but they must be made available to the um, adverse party for examination or copying. Okay, section 8. Again, another instance of um, uh, an exception to the original document rule. Okay, when the um, original document is in the custody of a public officer or, or recorded in a public office. Okay, it's a public document and it is under the custody of a government institution or government agency. Okay, so in that case, it may be proved by a certifi certified copy issued by the public officer in custody thereof. So, the secondary evidence here is the certified true copy of that original document. Okay? So, section 9. A party who calls for the production of a document and inspects, this, inspects the same is not obliged to offer it as evidence. So that is for our um, secondary evidence under the documentary evidence. Now let us proceed to another rule uh, which is important under the documentary evidence which is the parole evidence rule. So uh, it is provided under section 10. Let's see what's, uh, <clears throat> what's this all about. When the terms of an agreement has been reduced to writing, it is considered as containing all the, the terms agreed upon and there can be, as between the parties and their successors and interests, no evidence of such terms other than the contents of the written agreement. Okay, so it is just saying that um, when the subject of the inquiry is the terms of a written agreement okay there there is a case between parties and the the dispute is on the terms of the written agreement um, there will be no other evidence that will be admissible except that written agreement okay that is the parole evidence rule so hindi pwede na magpresent na evidence outside of the written agreement so the evidence again will own the the admissible evidence will only be the written agreement okay so um uh, the term parole here okay the term parole evidence means something oral or verbal that if we <clears throat> From the legal perspective, talaga, or from the legal definition of parole, it means oral or verbal. But with reference to contracts, it means ex extraneous or extraneous evidence or evidence aliunde. Okay, so the, the the definition of the parole evidence with respect to contract is evidence outside. Okay. Okay, or external evidence okay, outside of the um, written contract or agreement. So that is the what the term means. And the parole evidence rule prohibits a party from presenting external evidence okay, outside of the written agreement. Okay, so um, the concept here is in parole evidence is, um, for example, uh, what have the parties agreed upon? Okay, so the appropriate answer would be look into the written agreement and not elsewhere because only the contents of the written agreement are admissible in evidence. So that is the concept of the parole evidence. Let us not look elsewhere. If we want to resolve the dispute concerning the terms of a contract, 
let us not present evidence outside the contract. We must look into the contract itself and no other, no other document. Okay, so that is the concept of the parole evidence rule. However, like the original document rule, the parole evidence rule admits certain exception. Okay, that is still under section 10. However, a party may present evidence to modify, explain, or add to the terms of a, of a written agreement if he or she puts in issue in a verified pleading an, an intrin, a first exception, an intrinsic ambiguity, mistake, or imperfection in the written agreement. Second is the failure of the written agreement to express the true intent of the uh, true intent and agreement of the parties there too. So, for example, if there is a mistake, say um, the parties agreed uh, that the purchase price will be five hundred thousand pesos, but what is what was written in the agreement was only one hundred thousand pesos. So there is a failure to express the true intent of the agreement of the parties in the contract. So, the, the next is the validity of the written agreement or the existence of other terms agreed, uh, agreed to by the parties or their successors in interest after, okay, after the execution of the written agreement. So, those are the exceptions to the parole evidence rule okay so but we must remember ha, under this parole evidence rule um, this parole evidence rule is only applicable to the um, parties and successors in interest so those total strangers in the um, written agreement are not bound by the terms and are allowed to introduce extrinsic or parole evidence against the efficacy of the writing. Okay, so the this parole evidence rule applies only to the parties and their successors and interest. So, okay, so um, it cannot be invoked against those. Uh, total strangers to the written contract. So this term agreement and the written agreement includes wills. Okay, so yung mga wills, last will and testaments. Okay, these are included to the um, term agreement. Okay, 